And hello everyone, uh, thank you very much for your time today. My name is Julio Petrovic, Technical Marketing Engineer and Product Manager for the AirCheck and Air Magnet product lines. And today I'm here to announce the Linkrunner G2 V2 release. So for those of you that have a Linkrunner G2, which was released last October, you may be wondering what's new, what's next with it. So here it is, uh, number one, 802.3BT support, and we'll, we'll be going through the details in a few moments. Uh, injector support, you also have more VLAN information, multiple auto test improvements, and that's a little vague, we'll go through the details in a moment. Uh, VLAN monitor tool, you have packet captures also. So let's go through the details. And let's start with the 802.b3, sorry, bt, 802.3bt, sorry, uh, support. Uh, so now we'll be able to support classes five to eight, provide loaded and unloaded PoE, voltage and wattage. So when 802.3bt becomes more popular, you guys start seeing more switches supporting it, more APs that will require higher power, or just the Internet of Things, maybe lights um, or other devices that will require higher wattage or power, you'll be able to verify that your PoE is configured correctly and that is uh, sending out the right amount of power. So you'll have class five with 40 watts, class six with 51, class seven with 62 watts, class eight, 71 watts at the receiving end, of course, of the device. You also have the PoE injector support. So voltage measurements from 12 to 60 volts. That's also included now with the V2 uh, version of the software or firmware. Uh, more VLAN information. So we'll, you'll have two options. You have the option of just detecting the VLANs, see how many VLANs are configured on that port. Or if you join the VLAN, you'll be able to see details about which VLANs are configured on that port. For example, the uh, VID, uh, PRI, and so on. So you have the option of just, without joining the, a, a VLAN, seeing how many VLANs are out there. So on the screenshot on the right side, you can see an example where we're not part of the VLAN, but we can see how many VLANs are on that port. On the left, you have an example where we are part of, of the VLAN, and so we can see more details about what's going on there. Another thing that we've been asking about, oh yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> How it's doing that, uh, but <laughs> is it limited to uh, just major vendor switches or any any trunking? Any, any trunking? Standard any any standard trunking? Yes. That, it's reading dot one Q information, correct? Exactly. I, mean, mm -hmm. that, I mean, that just like Scott brought up earlier. Is that what it's doing? Yep. Okay. Because it's always broadcast. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, another thing we're adding. It's support for three new DHCP options. Option 60, and I'm sure I don't need to explain why that's important while installing access points. Uh, option 43, and option 150. This is more for IP phones, though. So Very nice. For, for your option 43, does it just give you the raw dump, or will it do hex to, will it do the hex conversion for you? Uh, it will do the hex numbering for you. So, so it's going to show you the hex, or it'll, it'll actually translate the hex to it will, it will translate the hex, but you have access to the hex, too. Damn. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Okie doke. Oh, oh, four. I want to yeah. oh, see, see that. Yeah. 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 That's fantastic. <laughs> so a few more things, pretty quick. Uh, refined auto test. And this one may be like, okay, what does that mean? Well, uh, basically, 
with the current version of the link runner, when you run an auto test, basically as soon as you plug in the cable, it runs automatically, um, you have no way of selecting which test you want to run. So it will just go through the barrage of the entire thing. And maybe you just installed the switch and put it in, plug it in. There's, it's not configured. You just want to verify PoE. You know there's no DHCP. You know there's, there's no DNS. So why spend the time waiting for those tests to like fail? So basically, what we're doing is that we added an option called stop after, on which basically you can tell the link runner to stop the auto test at X step of the test. So for example, you just want to verify the ACP. You don't care about DNS, gateway, et cetera. You can just disable all those. Or reverse, let's say you just want to verify connectivity of the local network. You don't want to verify a target on the internet or a server. You can just disable the targets. So now you can basically stop the test at X time instead of having to wait for it to go through all of it, even if you know there's no service or you don't care. You can also disable link life now. So in the past, the link life upload was basically a default. Uh, now, if you don't want to upload the results to link life because you're doing a quick test, or you don't want to uh, use link life because you don't need access to, well, you're not allowed to use a cloud service, for example, secure environments, then instead of waiting for that test to fail all the time, you can just disable it. Uh, next, we added a few extra tools to allow for more in-depth analysis. For example, we now have a VLAN monitoring tool where basically you can just plug in the RHIG2 and it will basically monitor the traffic on each VLAN, how much traffic per VLAN, how many VLANs, and so on. You can see a little example here on the right side of the screen. You can see for each of the VLAN how many frames. So you can see which VLAN is the busiest. And we have packet captures, or frame captures in this case. So you have the option of just plug it in, maybe to a span port, a mirror port, and just do a capture. How much memory does the device have in it for use for features like that? Uh, as many as the little SD card that you plug in allows. Okay. So okay. different from the air check that basically is limited to the internal memory with the link runner, like a phone, you can plug in your own SD card. You can add, I don't know, what's the biggest these days? A few hundred, a terabyte maybe? Okay, that's what I was going to ask. So there's no limitation yeah. on the size of the card? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Whatever the card supports. Yeah. Another feature that we've added, uh, simplified searching or app searching. So what we noticed over time is that the list of apps uh, on the Netscout store has been growing and growing and growing. And even though initially it wasn't too bad, uh, you could just scroll through a few apps. Uh, now with hundreds of them in there, it's getting more difficult to find what you're looking for. So we added a search option, make it a little easier. Just to, is there any social media shared information about the apps when we see them? Mm -hmm. It could be some weirdo just said, I, I want this weird app, and we find it. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we could like have reviews of stars? Of, I use this one all the time. Mm -hmm. This one sucks. Not at this time, but that's a very good one. Right now, you can, for example, um, send, a, send feedback through Link Live to our review team, uh, but it, you can like add a, put a star, three, two stars, three stars, whatever on it, or put a review that everyone else will be able to see. It's more for our team internally. So you find something that shouldn't be there, it's like, oh, this app is a, I don't know, a Trojan or something like that, then they will remove it. Is it possible maybe just to show the actual review status because it's in, in the Google Play or, Store? Or, yeah, you yeah, just that's, show that's a good the one. status of it. You, that yep. way you're not yeah. trying to rebuild a social system. Mm -hmm. Just show the star rating. That, that is a very good one. It is completely possible. Yeah, or or just think. sort by download count. Yeah. Yep. And the most popular ones will mm -hmm. show up. And that, yeah, that, that's a very good one. So right now it's not there, but yes, we I think we should be able to add that. So yeah, I'll, 
add it to the list. But yeah, it, that's a no. But that's a pretty good, pretty good one though. Um, a few other things: sharing files. So you save a packet capture, let's say, which is, like I mentioned, it's a new feature in here, and now you have the option of one, uh, upload it to Link Live, same as the air check. Or you could attach it to your previous test result. So you plug into a cable, you run the test, then you do a packet capture on that same ethernet wire or fiber. Then you want to attach that packet capture to the test result so you know it's part of that cable that you tested. Then you can do that now too. And then it will be uploaded to Link Live. Do you have any options of going into like say CloudShark and uploading it straight into CloudShark? Uh, not yet. Or, it is something or that. Or some other kind of. A yeah, not at this time. It's something we've been asked about. Basically, instead of having to manually download the file from Link Live and then open it with whatever application you prefer, just add a link to Cloud Shark, yeah. for example, or something. Uh, it's something that we are indeed considering already. The packet capture is fantastic, but mm -hmm. it's okay, I've got to save it and I've got to upload it to Link yeah. Live and I've got to download it to Link Live and take mm -hmm. it where mm -hmm. workflow on that is yep. horrid. Oh, yeah, and depending how big it is, it could take yeah, a while. Yeah, that could take, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, that's something on our list already. That's a very popular request we've been getting a lot. 